every so often I bring something to the table that you have to move on quickly if you want it. This is one of those times. If you like these boots, order immediately. That's because Danner no longer makes this model. I brought them out of the closet tonight thinking I had all kinds of time to review them. I go to Danner's website, I start clicking around, and they aren't making what I think is the best overall lightweight tactical boot I've ever worn. The Danner Pathfinder Gore-Tex. And I've worn a lot of boots in my time. Flying boots, combat boots, ski boots, cowboy boots for a time, tactical boots of all sorts. These are some of my favorites. So if you like them, order them now. Now, like all boot manufacturers, footwear manufacturers, the models are constantly changing and some of their new, newer models could be, and that's a big could, be just as awesome as these. Let me throw down what I just said in another bit review, some context for these, and it will answer why I like them so much, and this is kind of POU. Running and gunning in the desert with a light to medium loadout. We'll call it a level two loadout. Boot of choice right here, bro. As long as there's not deep snow, because they, this version right here, they make it in a 10 inch version, I'll roll in a screenshot, and they also make it in a, as you're seeing here, the six inch version. If I don't have deep snow, I'm wearing these boots. Wearing them. I just love them. Now, maybe it's because how my foot is shaped, but these are the most comfortable, and I've been testing them for a number of years now, the most durable tactical boot I've used. The funny thing is, let's go back a little bit to context, they're not really a tactical boot. They're a hunting boot. Now, not to say Danner doesn't make a whole bunch of military combat, you know, LE, you know, tactical boots. They do. Go to the website, you'll see all kinds. And I've worn a few Danners in my time in the military. As a pilot, I wore Danner, Gore-Tex, full leather, flight boots. They were good. I didn't breathe that much. We'll talk about that. But they were good. This is really a lightweight hunting boot. Looking at them, I think they're designed for bow hunters. There. But, I mean, going back to context, these are also a boot I like just wearing around town. They are so comfortable, you don't want to take them off. At all. And there's some other boots that I, I get, you know, I'm back to the ranch and I'm like, I can't wait to take these off. Or, I, I know I'm wearing a boot. These, I just forget. Now, when we're talking context, philosophy of use, this is not a boot I would go backpacking in with a heavy load, even probably day packing. I'm talking a lightweight loadout. So I'm carrying some mags, some LBE, and that's it. We're going to kind of favor the mobility side of the equation with these Danner Pathfinder boots. I mean, look at this. Remember what I tell you? If I can bend that sole in half like that, that's ah, not a lot of, you know, foot support for a load. For just you, your body weight, maybe an AR-15, maybe some Axe, it's, it's adequate. It works. Remember, <clears throat> someone may see the video and they're new to foot gear and they'll go, well, I, wouldn't you always want a stiff, and I just reviewed these, the Cabela's Perfect 10, so we'll roll these in as an example. Wouldn't you always want something stiff? The answer is no, not always, because if you're not carrying a load, then it makes it a little bit more cumbersome. Uh, if you're a skier, it's like walking in ski boots. It's a real stiff roll of the foot. It takes more energy, more time. Now, as you weight that down with a backpack, then that architecture of a well-constructed boot like the Cabela's polyurethane mids midsole, then it's functioning as designed. But without the weight, and I'm traveling alone. Actually, these are so good. They're so broken in. You can run these, but a lot of stiff alpine or mountaineering boots are not. You know, they're designed for crampons, whatever. They're very stiff, designed that way. This is going to be more comfortable, and it's a high-speed boot. I've reused some others, and they're pretty good, but I wasn't totally stoked on them. I'm stoked on these. Looking at them, they don't look like much, do they? You go, ah, I've seen a, you know, a bunch of... I saw some boots in Walmart look like that, you'll probably, you'll probably say. Aha! Don't kid yourself. There are huge differences in quality. For instance, these are thousand denier exterior exteriors on these Danner boots. 
and they'll have others in the lineup. The advantage of that, going back to those leather Dan, uh, Danner flight boots I had, is breathability. That really drives towards the comfort factor of these boots, number one. They are also thin slate insulated, in case you're wondering. If you're like me and your foot's generating sweat, that breathability is huge because it allows that sweat, the moisture, to some level, not a huge level, to get pumped out. It's gonna get pumped out through the chimney, I call that part of the chimney, or the exterior of the boot to a less, lesser degree because these are also Gore-Tex line. That's why they call Gore-Tex Pathfinder GTX. Okay, and I've mentioned before that the construction of the boot, how it's put together, how it's sewn, the materials used, maybe to some slight degree, the exterior waterproofing of a boot drives much more to the waterproofness than a Gore-Tex membrane. These are no different on the Pathfinders. Let's look at the gusset of the tongue. And I bought these from a store. It was Sportsman's Warehouse. When I, I saw them, I started looking at them and I was like, ah, I don't know. And then I saw the name Danner. I respect the name Danner. It's a high quality boot. I started looking at feature by feature. You know how I am. I'm a gear reviewer. What's up? I was like, this, this boot's pretty well put together. Fully gusseted tongue. And look at that, dudes. That's from the desert. I still have some weeds and seeds in there. See how that catches that? If that fully gusseted tongue isn't there, it comes back in here to the tongue and it sticks in your sock, or worse yet, into the tricot lining, which is comfortable, by the way. Yeah, so pretty waterproof. Uh, I've dunked these in the water a couple times. My foot stayed dry. Gore-Tex membrane, I think, helps a lot. Now, if we're talking waterproofness of the external material of a boot, Cordura's probably last on the list, in my opinion, because the DWR will wear off. It will absorb moisture over time. It will get soaked, and then it's pretty much going to be up to the Gore-Tex membrane to stop the ingress of water into your boot. The leather's a better, better uh, material for that. For waterproofness, I can't speak, waterproofness, not necessarily breathability. This is new buck leather. And every material can get worn and abraded. Let's see, I have a cut. These There's a cut right here from a rock. Uh, not e rock, but a rock, R-O-C-K. There's another one, but it's normal wear and tear. You can't prevent that. On these, here's normal wear and tear on the 1,000 denier. See how the toe's wearing right here? Wearing all the way through. So what do I do? Dun, da, da. And no, I, I don't work for KG's. KG's Boot Guard from Sportsman's Warehouse. So I'm gonna put it on these two. It's gonna make the tip of the boots look just like that right there. Oh, that's cool. That's a durable tip of the boot. Now you may say, well, I want one that where I have the toe cap completely covered. I understand where you're coming from. The problem with when the toe cap extends over the toe with rubber or plastic is you're gonna get cracks right here over time. This whole junction will crack and it still might on these, I don't know. Um, I just like the boot guard. That's what I'm gonna do. And with that, now I have a very durable kind of plastic rubber coated tip of the boot. Okay, how about lacing on these Danner Pathfinders? Uh, it's standard, just eyelets on the bottom. I have no problems with that at all. They don't really have an instep lock right here, like a good backpacking boot would. But remember the context. We're basically running in the, this boot. We're, we're sprinting. We're running and gunning, or more realistically for a lot of us, walking around town. You don't need an instep lock then. In fact, it's probably going to make a more uncomfortable boot for you. And then you got speed laces up here. Lock, lock. They go on quick. The only thing I really wish they had, this pull tab is down here. I wish it was up here because you can bring your boot in or your foot in. Works fine. I just kind of wish it was there. Here's the sole, the bottom of it. It works good. Didn't seem like it held mud. Good traction. I didn't go, you know, hiking the rocks with these. This is a desert boot for me mostly. These weigh nothing. They're very light on your feet and that makes them fast mobility side of the equation. Removable footbed, well, like pretty much all boots got, right? This is what it looks like, a little bit worn. You could replace that with all types or very high quality footbeds. I've reviewed a couple in my backpacking series of videos. Um, I have them with these because I've just been happy with them. They've been comfortable. And the volume for my foot is just about right. Another reason they're so comfortable, and I bet you guys will not put your finger on this one, Yes, the fabric exterior breathes well. 
it's comfortable, but also it has kind of a traditional boot construction. Notice this, how it's not a constructed toe that goes all the way down. So the side of the boot can actually flex with wider feet. See that? That's a very traditional way to create a boot. The downside is, is that you have a fabric here. You don't have like a plastic protection plate coming up around the foot. So if you get into rocky terrain, you're going to shred these. You know, you just won't. See, here's, again, the Cabela's. They have this coming up. So you have some protection riding up here. Just a note. But if you, you have feet like mine that will flex and sometimes get wide, you know, over time, like duck feet, I guess, I like these boots. The price is reasonable. It's going to be a snapshot in time. I'm going to post this video as soon as I can. It's really up to the audience when I post this video because you have to consume viewer-wise uh, what I posted previously, I hope this place, and I ordered another set tonight <laughs> because when I post a video, I still want another pair of these before, when these wear out. I hope the place has them is what I'm driving at. I hope you don't go there and they go, oh, they're all sold out. And because I was almost did not do this video. I was like, gosh, the guys can't find this boot. They're going to be frustrated. I mean, really, what's the point? Sometimes I wait so long. It happens. But the Danner Pathfinder Gore-Tex boots, whether you get the 6-inch one or the 10-inch one, I think they're both going to be excellent. I know they're not the only great boot out there. You can look for other boots. that have, Rocky makes boots that are very similar to this that have the Cordura exterior. Look at those. They might be just as awesome. That's my review. See ya, and best of luck running and gunning.